You know, we're beginning for the next three weeks a series entitled, There is Purpose. I think all of us really need purpose. And, and it's, it's understanding us as believers, understanding our purpose can be difficult at times. Would you agree with that? And, and finding out what the reason in our lives why we maybe are struggling with something, maybe why we've been going through a particular physical battle or other things, understanding some of the purpose in our lives is really hard. And, and uh, often we ask the question, you know, why? Why are we struggling this? Why is there, how can there be a purpose in what I'm going through? And, uh, you know, a lot of times when we're, we're going through that, we, we, we tend to get confused about some things. And, and we, best way to say it about this is, is this little puppy here. Check this thing out right here. How many of you remember this? Anybody remember those? Hours of fun. Entertainment for kids for hours. These kids who have Game Boys and all that have no idea how much fun that is right there. Mindless. It's just mindless fun. Right? How many of you had one of those as a kid, right? Okay, okay, yeah. So you are with me on that one. Thrills, excitement, more. Right there. All it is is a board, a, a rubber band, and a ball. It's just fantastic. Paddle boards were amazing. They were amazing tools. I got one for my birthday. I loved it, you know, hours of mindless knocking, for sure. Uh, you know, and then you learn how to, you know, between the legs and behind the head, you get hit in the face, whatever, all that good stuff. I, and what happens then with those things when the rubber band breaks or the ball gets shot off and you've lost it? And in my household, when that happened, it went into another zone. <laughs> I heard the groans from that. It went into a whole different zone because the term paddleboard became a whole different meaning, if you catch my meaning. I think some of you do. And, and that paddleboard, um, it stopped bouncing on balls and started bouncing on my hiney as needed in my life, which of course was not very often. You believe me? <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we can get confused about the meaning of certain things and, and the purpose of things in our lives. And that became a very confusing purpose in my life. The paddleboard became something completely different. And I remember uh, the story my parents tell of when I was little and my paddleboard had broken and had been used a bit on various places on my body uh, as a spanking tool and we went to Camp Davidson to some sort of a, a retreat and I was just a little guy and and we walked in and my mom tells the story of how we walked in and if you've been to the uh, the lodge of Camp Davidson years ago you remember that when you walked in there was typically ping pong tables in there and a few other there's a fireplace and registration tables and I walked in and there was there was these tables over there, and on the tables were piled all kinds of spanking boards. And I was afraid because I had suddenly began to put a different purpose to what I thought was a fun toy in my life. And, and would you agree with me to say that if you don't know something's purpose, you'll likely abuse it? Hmm? Yeah, my mom didn't understand the purpose of the paddleboard that I knew, she understood the purpose of the paddleboard in a different way. And uh, it's the same in our lives. If you don't know something's purpose in your life, a lot of times we will end up abusing it. Can I get an amen on that one? What's the reason some of you are frustrated today? You know, I think it has a lot to do with knowing your purpose, your reason. You know, a lot of times we work really hard on the job where nobody notices much of our, our ventures or much of our, our struggles to get the job done. And oftentimes we think to ourselves, why bother? Nobody even saw it anyway. Uh, many times we will fight for a marriage with a, our spouse who, who doesn't really seem to care. And when we begin to ask the question over time, why try? It's, it seems useless anyway. Sometimes in our lives we try to serve God 
and do good when everything continues to seem to go wrong. Anybody relate to any of those? And we ask the question, why? Why do we do that? What's the point? I don't know why I even try. What's my purpose? And I seem to ask why a lot as I try to find my purpose in, in my life. We, we've all experienced that. And, and, and today, if I had to put a title on this message, it would be that there is purpose in your why. There's purpose in your why. And I want you to understand that that is truly an important thing in that why right there. Most of us know King David. Remember King David in the Old Testament? Yes? Shepherd boy who became king over Israel. A real rags to riches story. Small town kid does good, right? It's a, it's a great story. Everybody likes it. But if we look in the book of Acts, and you can turn over to the book of Acts. I believe it's chapter 13 is where we're going in a second. Yep, book of Acts, chapter 13. If, when we look in there, what we're going to see is that the writer of Acts was, was sharing some things about the salvation that Christ brought to us and how God raised Christ from the dead and that his body would never decay. And the writer, Luke, was trying to make a point here and, and he pointed out that it was very much unlike some of the great heroes of the faith that the Jews looked to of the day, heroes like David and a few others. And as we look at Acts 13, in verse 36, it says this right here. He said, now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. It's another way of saying nicely that he died. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. Again, opposite of what happened with Christ, he's making a, 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 a show you this is what Christ did in the you elevate David so great as a king, but Christ's body never decayed, David's did. Now, the last part of that's a little gross, right? We often think that, but the first part, when you think about it, is kind of cool. The first part of that verse says, when David had served God's purpose. Have you thought about how much David served God's purpose? He served God's purpose in fulfilling his calling of his life almost all of his life. David understood the purpose of his why, the thing we often ask ourselves trying to determine what is our why. He accomplished this through his what? His why was to serve God's purpose. That was David's why. Dr. Miles Monroe, a, a pastor from the Bahamas, said back in the 90s, a quote, and I love the quote, it said, the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but a life without purpose. Think about that for a moment. The greatest tragedy in life is not dying, it's living your life with no purpose whatsoever. And many of us go through our lives in times when we seem to struggle with our why of life. I, I think... Some of us may have struggled a little bit with that during COVID and the lockdown. Yes? Yeah. I, I, I think some of us maybe go through that when we struggle with some depression or some, some feelings of emotional downness. Some of us may struggle with our why question um, as we maybe are a caregiver for somebody with a chronic illness, a family member, a loved one. Some of us struggle with the why as we begin to experience the body breaking down of the knees and the back and the neck and the arms and the fingers and whatever else breaks down. Some of us struggle with the why when we have a fear of a diagnosis that we pretty much know is coming. These and many other struggles drive us to begin to ask the question in our lives, what is my why? Why? And in the midst of those struggles, we often wonder how can there be a why inside of that. Next week, we will look at that there is re there's purpose in the struggle. But this week, we're looking at the why of that struggle. And I've heard people use the phrase, I can't seem to get motivated. I've got no reason to get going. And another way of saying this is I've just lost my why. I've lost my purpose of what I do and how I do it. When we start asking about our purpose is when we can begin to find it in the why if we begin to look in the right spots. See, David served whose purpose? 
God's purpose. His why was found in God's purpose. And that's difficult for some of us. Today I want to look at three principles. If you're taking notes, you're going to want to write these down. Three principles of your purpose. Three principles that you can lean into, that you can help to grasp onto, to, uh, to determine and help find you, for you, some purpose of your why. See, we said that David had served God's purpose. And, and this is true because we've seen it all through his life. But the first, uh, the first idea, the principle of your purpose is this right here. Your purpose isn't for you. Your purpose is God's purpose. And that's where I think so many of us get confused. Your purpose is not for you. It's not about you. Our purpose should be God's purpose in our lives. And King David understood this, but I think he understood it even before he was a king. I, I think he even understood it as a boy. We see him speaking this out time and time again when he was running from, uh, for his life from Saul, who was currently king at the time. David had been anointed king as a young boy, but didn't take the throne until he was an adult. So he was God's chosen, but Saul wouldn't give it up. And so David then was busy trying to keep his life and feeling like, where is my purpose in all of this, as he ran from Saul. In Psalms chapter 57, verse 2, we see David write this in this psalm. He said, I cry out to God most high, to God who will fulfill his purpose in me. He understood, David understood that the purpose was not his as in David's, it was his as in God's in him. Again, I want to say, your purpose today, I want you to understand, is, isn't for you. It's God's purpose. It's the way God wants it to be in your life. David wasn't trying to find his purpose. He was trying to fulfill God's purpose in his daily life. In other words, if I were to say it a different way, your purpose isn't for you. Your purpose is God's purpose. Your why is found in God's purpose for your life. And you're like, that still doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't get it. You will catch it before we're all done. So what is a purpose? If we looked at the definition of purpose, we see that purpose is defined as the original intent. In other words, the paddleboard was created, its original intent, mom, <laughs> was a toy for children, <laughs> not, a, not a scarry tool of my mind. <laughs> it didn't scar me too bad. There's an original purpose by a designer who designed and created you for a purpose outside of yourself. God created you for a reason, for a purpose. He did that. He created me tall, sort of thin, but not really, straight hair, in need of glasses. He created me the way I am. For a purpose. He created you the way you are for a purpose. And the problem we tend to run into in this is that if you don't know something's purpose, I said it earlier, if you don't know something's purpose, you're likely to abuse it. And I would say that we find that over and over and over in people all around us. Would you agree with that? When we think about, we think about the abuses of purpose in our lives. Many have been handed gifts and talents and many different things. And we find that people abuse those for their own glory and for their own reasoning in their own lives. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But a lot of times we abuse those things and, and we've got to get back to what it is. The word for sin in the New Testament Greek that is used is called Harmathia. I know we speak of sin as this horrible thing that we do, and it is, but the word sin in the Greek actually 
literally means, it's an archery term, it means miss the mark. It doesn't mean you're shooting that way and it's that way, but the term armatia means you just missed the mark. And it's, it's all designed as they did that in our lives Missing the intended purpose for us, how we do that in the things that we step into in our lives, the, the, the sin areas we step into, we're missing the mark of what God has for you and for me as we do that. It's a violation of the original intent of the designer of your life. You catching that? And the very reason so many people step into sin in their lives is that they don't know their purpose. They don't know their purpose. They're always searching. They're always looking for some form of validation. And the further we move away from God, the more we search for that validation, don't we? The further we move from God, the more we search for that in our own lives. We maybe try this job and that one didn't work, so we're going to try this job. And I didn't like that one either, so we're going to try that. And we keep trying things, trying to find validation in those different jobs. Or maybe it's in a relationship. We're looking for validation of our purpose in a relationship, and that's why it's so hard to settle down, because you're never going to find your purpose in those things. For some, it may be in their vacation time, trying to find the relaxing, the moment they need in that. And I'm not saying any of those things are wrong. But that's not the place to find your purpose. Does that make sense? For some of us, we may try to find it in the clothing we wear or the, the brands that we wear or the type of car we drive or the type of guns we buy or whatever it is. We we're trying to find purpose in some of these things. And all of life is unintentionally reduced to one really big experiment of trying different things to find our purpose when the whole time our purpose is found in what God created us to be. And we fail to find it all along. Some of us are just looking for something, for someone, for anything to bring us fulfillment. Boy, it's getting really quiet in here. Because we, we don't understand the original intent of what God created us for. The designer who created us. He has a purpose for us. We've missed the why behind why God created you. And there's a purpose in your why. He gave it to you. You just, some of you have yet to find it. Some of you found it. So we experiment, we search in an attempt to find ourselves and we treat ourselves and we pamper ourselves and, you know, you've heard the phrase, you do you, boo, right? And uh, it's, it's one of those things where we just keep on trying to figure it out. And, and we look around and all we see is people who we, we think we've got ourselves figured out. And it's all about us. And we have to ask if we would find out. Uh, they, they think they've got it together. As we look at individuals and we think, you know, they're accomplished, they're successful. Or we think, wow, that person has it all together. If you were to sit down and really talk to the individual and dive in behind the curtain, uh, the facade... I bet you would find out that they indeed themselves are not happy with the life they're living and they don't find purpose in what they're doing. They're just trying to find it. So we search and we look. And we know these people are popular and yet still miserable. Why? Because there's no purpose. We know others maybe who are powerful, powerful people, and yet they hate life because they don't seem to have their why figured out. Others who are prosperous in business and making money and they're doing great, but if you were to really talk to them, you'd find they're disillusioned. Maybe they're depressed a little bit. There's no why. They have lost their purpose. They've never found their purpose of what God had for them because it's all about them. So what do we need to understand? What do we need to come to the point of understanding in our lives? Here's what it is. We need to understand that we are created for heaven. We talked about this. We just did a series on heaven and hell, right? And how this place is not our home. But the problem is, is that we are living for the world. We were created for heaven, yet we're living for today in the world. We're desperately searching for something that the world will never be able to prov provide for us. And that's why we have to embrace our why of what God has for us. Your purpose isn't 
for you. Somebody say that. My purpose isn't for me. Your purpose is God's purpose. Your purpose is what God has for you. He created you. He was your original designer, and he had an original intent for you and his will in your life and for his purpose and for his glory that you would be able to live out. See, number one, your purpose isn't for you. Your purpose is God's purpose. The second principle I want to share with you today is that you don't find your purpose. You don't find it. You serve God's purpose in your life. That's what David did. He served God's purpose. This is so critical for us to understand. Knowing what God has for you, you don't find your purpose. You serve God's purpose in you. If we look back at David, he wasn't just pursuing his dream. It's not like he had a bucket list of things. Let's see now. In my bucket list, I'm, I'm 12, 13 years old, 14. I think maybe I need to kill a giant. That'd be great. That'd be fun. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slay a lion. That might be kind of cool. I'm going to kill thousands of warriors from other nations. That'd be pretty cool, too. I want to be king. And uh, just instantly in my mind, Lion King story rings into my just want to be king, right? Sorry, I digress. My bad. David didn't have a bucket list of things that he was working to accomplish to find his why. David served God's purpose. It's no coincidence that Luke, under the influence of the Holy Spirit in his life, when he wrote the book of Acts, that he used the word serve when speaking of David. It's not a coincidence. He served God's purpose. David served God's purpose all of his life. Let's look at some examples. If we, if, if we were to see in the Old Testament, I'll, I'll just, we, we don't necessarily have time to go through and read the stories, but I'll kind of recount to you. Um, before David was anointed as king, as a, as a young teenage boy, before he was anointed as king, Samuel the prophet knew that God had a new king to follow Saul. And God told him, go to the house of of Ben-Jesse. Jesse has son that I want to anoint as king. Well, Jesse had eight sons. And so he came to Ben-Jesse and he said, God wants to anoint your son as king. And can I please have you present them to me? And so, of course, the father, being the man that he was, knew that the oldest, most experienced, and the most handsome would be the one to be king because that's the way it works, the first in my line. So he brought the first son out to Samuel, and Samuel looked him over, and, you know, he realized that, you know, he's definitely ruggedly handsome. He's smart. He's the oldest. He's pretty well built. Um, He had the best ACT scores and had a really good prom queen that he got to go to the prom with. But God said no. So Ben Jesse, a little deflated, brought his second son. And again, after inquiring of the Lord and going through the list of things in the prophet's mind of what God was asking about, he said again, no. And son number three and son number four and five and six and seven. And now Ben Jesse's just a little deflated. And, and the, the prophet's like, don't you have any other sons? And he's like, well, yeah. I mean, I've got, I've got David, but he's like a teenager. He's out tending the sheep in the fields. And the prophet says, bring him to me. And the prophet anointed David as a king because God confirmed that even as a teenager, there was a why in his life. But what we want to see in that is that Samuel couldn't find without David what God had chosen. What do you think David was doing before Samuel was, was ready to uh, anoint him as king, he was out serving somewhere, wasn't he? He was tending the sheep. He was taking care of sheep out in the field. Let me know, let me tell you what he was not doing. David wasn't building his resume while he was out there. He wasn't working through his, and I've done this, and I've done that, and let me list a few references. I'll give my oldest brother, because he's buff and cool, I'll And uh, he he wasn't building up a resume. He wasn't strategizing on a way to expand the family brand to uh, increase the family business. He wasn't working to get noticed. He wasn't looking to be discovered like we do today or looking for that big break to get out of shepherding. 
You know, he wasn't looking to make his, his rock rock video or TikTok as we call it today, but then it was rock rock video to go viral. He was taking care of sheep. He was being a shepherd, serving his father's purpose, taking care of the sheep. And if you look in Psalm 78, in verses 70 and 71, it says this. God chose his servant David, calling him from the sheep pens. And let me just tell you that some of you who need to be tending sheep are seeking spotlights when you should be in the sheep pen doing what God created you to do all along, and that's to serve. He took David, excuse me, he chose David, calling him from the sheep pens, and he took David from tending the ewes and the lambs and made him the shepherd of Jacob's descendants, God's own people. He made him king. When David was, was there, when he was, David was answering God's call, the why question that came up was already answered in his life. It was in God's purpose for him, and he simply said yes. He was serving. He was doing faithfully what he was called to do. David wasn't seeking a position, was he? He wasn't seeking fame. He wasn't seeking anything like that. He was, he was merely serving his purpose. You know, if we think about Goliath and David, you know, Goliath was taunting, the giant was taunting uh, all the Israelites, and they were afraid and didn't want to go out and fight him. It was one warrior against one warrior, and whoever wins, that's, that's who wins the whole thing, and none of the warriors wanted to go out and fight Goliath. Why did God choose David? He was just a teenage boy. He was not the biggest. He was not the most ripped warrior. In fact, he was just a scrawny teen. He wasn't the most powerful. He didn't close the biggest deal for the family for the day. He was already anointed as king as a teenager, and yet still a young, young boy. He was merely taking lunchables to his brothers out on the warrior field. That's what he was doing. Just faithfully doing what he was asked to do. He was serving his father. He was serving his father and how he was chosen in that moment of time. And if he had not obeyed his father, think about this, if he had not lived out the why that he was serving God's purpose in his life, which is obedience and serving, he would not have been in a place to fight Goliath, would he? You think about that. Sometimes we think, God, I don't want to set chairs up again. I'm tired of setting up chairs and putting down chairs. It was in that moment for David of just taking lunch to his brothers where God revealed to him something greater in his life that he was, never thought he would be facing. It's in the serving moments when God begins to reveal you more of your why. He wasn't hoping for his big break. He was just simply serving faithfully. What did he do? He served God's purpose. David served God's purpose. I hope you can understand this. I hope you get a hold of what this can be in your life. You may feel strangled in your circumstances. You may be struggling with your why of your life and how it works into your life. See, your purpose isn't for you. I want to say that. Your purpose isn't for you. Your purpose is God's purpose in you. You don't find your purpose. You serve God's purpose. How? How do I serve God's purpose? If you want to serve God's purpose, how do I go about doing his will and serving his will for my life and his purpose in my life? Here it is, number three principle. If you want to serve God's purpose, start serving God's people. That's what David did. You think about everything King David did. He served a king who was trying to kill him. Think about that. He's busy playing the harp to help calm the king down, and the king keeps throwing spears at him, trying to spear him to the wall. David served faithfully God's people. He understood that service, serving, was what God had for him. Now, I can hear in my head some of y'all are saying, well, that's really dumb. My purpose is not about serving. I'd rather write a book. Or maybe I'd, I'd rather, you know what, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm going to start a business, uh, I, I'm an influencer. I, I, I make six figures. I want to record a CD. That's really dumb to just serve God's people. But let me just tell you, it's never dumb 
to love, is it? If you want to serve God's purpose, you've got to start serving God's people wherever you are at in your life right now. And that can look like so many different things. Because if you look at the life of David, you see him all through his life, prior to being a king, continued to serve in many different ways, even into being the king and continued to serve. It wasn't too low for Jesus to serve when you think about his life and him coming. He said, here's my purpose in in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 1045. Jesus said it this way, for even the Son of... He didn't say that, excuse me, Mark wrote about it. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served or to become important, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. See, if Jesus can serve, how come we can't serve? If Jesus can understand that God's purpose is found in serving, how come we can't find that? You want to serve God's purpose? Start serving God's people. Start serving God's people. You feel frustrated in your life maybe sometimes by inactivity or getting bogged down in the struggles that you're facing. And I I understand that. I get that. I relate to that. Because we all go through it. Anybody here breathing? Raise your hand if you're breathing. Okay, then, then you and I fall in that same category. We all get frustrated. And, and here's what we have to do is we've got to be so careful to not let the devil rob you of your why in those moments when you're down and you're defeated. We've got to continue to serve through those. As I think about David and the, the times, if you read through the Old Testament and some of the, the, the things that are written in there, you see David over and over was running and hiding for his life in caves trying to survive while Saul hunted him with armies. David was already the king. He wasn't a rebel. He wasn't a bad person. He was already the king. Saul just hadn't relinquished his crown yet. And here he is. Imagine the discouragement he's facing, and yet he continues to serve God's anointed Saul by not killing him. So many times we have to be careful in our struggles to not get robbed of our why. There is purpose in your why when you serve each day. There's purpose in your why when you serve each day. Fulfilling God's purpose, not yours. And that's where we get so confused because we love to serve our purpose. Oh, it's so good to serve our purpose. I love it when I do something that makes me feel good. Y'all are like, I know, but I'm not going to say it. You aren't called to seek platform or power or position. You're called to serve God right where you are in your life today, even in the midst of the hard things you're facing. Maybe that looks like picking up groceries for a neighbor who can't go grocery shopping or a a single mom. Maybe it's it's volunteering to babysit for that single mother who needs a break. (laughs) All the mother said... Thank you. Maybe it's providing a meal for somebody who physically can't do it. I I was talking with one of the ladies in our church who had a a, a longtime friend who was going through a real hard time in her life, just a real physical challenge, got on a plane and went there and served her for about a week and a half to two weeks, made sure she was okay, made sure that things were going to be all right for her. Maybe it's mowing a lawn of a neighbor who physically can't do it anymore. Maybe it's being a prayer warrior, praying for people who need someone to stand in the gap for them. Maybe it's serving right here at Lebanon First Assembly. Maybe it's a small group leader, facilitator here at the church, or, or a greeter, or a tech person who's running the booth. Maybe it's someone who's serving in kids' church or in the nursery. Maybe it's buying a gift card anonymously, blessing a family who's really, really down on their luck right now and could use a blessing. Or on social media, uh, being able to encourage somebody with a word or a scripture. and See what opportunities arise out of those things you do. See, we don't go to church, church. I just want to say that. We don't go to church. We are the church. We are the church. And here's the thing. So many of us think we go to church. We don't go. We are the church. And we 
exist for the world. We don't exist to get together and kumbaya, my Lord. Kum. No, we exist and we come in here to allow God to excite us and charge us up, prep us, get our hearts ready to go back out into a hurting, dying world that needs to know about Jesus. We are the church. The church is not this building. This is not God. We are the church. And he's calling us to go serve. Your purpose isn't in some big, future, one-time, specific assignment that he has for you. Maybe your purpose is just right here, right now, today with babies who need a diaper changed. Uh -huh. See, your purpose is not just an assignment in the future, faithfully serving God. It's faithfully serving today. It's not in the future. It is today. Talking with folks during the pandemic and uh, we were shut down, as many of you were around here, different jobs were shut down. The most common statement I heard from people uh, about that was not that they missed church, although some said that, not that they missed worship, although some said that, not that they missed preaching, which I don't think anybody has said that one, but just saying, or teaching or small groups. The most common statement I heard was, I miss serving. From those who were involved in something somewhere in living out God's why in their life, there is a fulfillment of purpose in serving. And they got it. And that's what I kept hearing is I miss serving. I miss being able to do whatever it is. And the interesting thing is about serving, there's no pay, there's no rewards, there's no, uh, it just, you know, it's just serving every day. The pay is in what God does in you, isn't it? Anybody who's serving should say an amen on that one. See, the most joyful moment is when you do something for someone else without expecting anything back in return whatsoever. That's, that's when it's really good. That's when the why and your purpose fall together so well. See, there's purpose in your why. That's why David served God's purpose. There is a fulfillment that happens when you are serving, when you are doing what you're supposed to do. Even when David was caring for the sheep, even when he was taking snacks to his brothers, there was still a fulfillment in the purpose. David fulfilled his calling. His why was to serve God's purpose each and every day. And as I said in the very beginning of this message, if you don't know something's purpose, you'll, you're likely to abuse it. Maybe that makes a little more sense now than it did regarding the paddleboard. If you don't know something's purpose, if you don't know the original intent of what God did in your life and is doing through you and wants to do through you, you're likely to abuse it. And I would say over and over and over in people's lives, we abuse the purpose that God has given to us. See, David wasn't a man after his own glory, was it? We know David is a man after what? God's heart. And that's why he served God's purposes, because he understood who God was in him and what God wanted to do through him. Many of us today, we've been, we've been gifted with our why in the life, but we're using it for our purpose and not for God's purpose. See, some of us understand our why, but it's all about us. Oh, that would be a great place to hear an amen out there. Oh, but it hurts so bad, Pastor. I don't want to say it. What's your purpose? Your purpose isn't to binge watch Netflix or Dirty Jobs with Mike Rowe and watch it through all the seasons. Your purpose isn't to save up and kind of hold back and hoard whatever money you may have been blessed with. Your purpose isn't to become well-known or powerful. Your purpose is always God's glory. You serve God's purpose. You serve God's purpose. Whether it's tending the sheep, which is the worst job available in the family, 
or it's taking your brother's lunch, which implies you're not big enough to go play with the big boys at, at battle. Neither one of those options sounded very fun. Would you agree? But still, we serve God's purpose. See, it's time for us to stop using excuses to avoid what God's purpose is in our lives. And that's what we do a lot. We keep using excuses to not fulfill the purpose God has for us in our lives. And let me say this, you will never, ever find more joy in your life personally than when you are serving God's purpose in your life. It just never will happen. Will you bow your heads with me today? Father, as we've looked at shifting our purpose to your purpose, sink into our hearts what you have for us. You have something for us, God. I know you do. I know that for some of us, we know exactly what our purpose is, and we've avoided it, walked away from it, didn't want to go near it. Because we didn't like tending sheep or we didn't like carrying lunch to somebody else. Help us to understand our purpose and that is to serve your purpose. 